workers have a lot of questions about rasps and which ones they need and how they work and uh, what should they buy and what are their important features and even how to use them. So we're going to talk a little bit about rasps here today and um, you know, let you figure, help you figure out what you need to get started with them. Um, there are two broad categories of rasps that you need to be aware of. Uh, most rasps like uh, this, uh, this one here, are uh, made by machine, where the machine comes in and, and uh, cuts all the teeth. And this works okay, but the, uh, the, the problem is, is that the teeth will dig in to your work, especially in softer work, and then the, the, the next row of teeth are precisely behind it, and they get stuck in those same little ruts that it made. And so as you move across the work, it'll go tick, 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 tick leaves a pretty poor finish. So machine-made rasps uh, can be pretty difficult to work with. And that's why I've always preferred hand-stitched rasps because of the randomness of the teeth. And in this very large cabinet rasp, uh, you can see that these, all of these teeth were uh, stitched or punched out by hand. And that randomness uh, creates a very smooth feeling and a very uh, nice finish. And so uh, hand-cut rasps, as they're called, are uh, very much worth seeking out. And these are made by a French company, they're RU uh, Rasps, and they make a wide variety of tools for sculptors and uh, furniture makers. I think that most people can do a lot of work with only three rasps. Uh, the first one is a cabinet rasp, and usually anywhere between 9 and 10 inches long, and you want to pick one that has a grain of about 9 or 10, maybe 11. And the grain is a measure of fineness, 1 being the most coarse and 15 being the most fine. So this is, this is a 10. And the really coarse ones are actually for sculptors and for stone, so stay away from the really coarse ones. But, but really anything from about 6 or 7 up to 15 are for, are for woodworking. So this, this one is a 10, uh, which is nice for removing material quickly. Uh, the second rasp, that I think a lot of people will uh, get a lot of utility from is the rat tail. Uh, so be called because it's shaped like a rat's tail. And uh, this one is about six inches long. And usually I get them in about 13 to 15 grain. Uh, and, they're, and they're very useful for producing uh, hollow shapes and for coping uh, inside uh, moldings. And then the third one that I like is this is a modeler's rasp. And this is a half round rasp also, like the cabinet rasp, so it has one flat face and one curved face. But this is a shorter tool, usually six, seven inches long. You can get them as small as four inches. And um, usually much finer, 13 to 15 grain. And this is the, uh, the tool that you'll use to uh, finish up your, your work with. So those three rasps, you start with those and you can do an incredible amount of work. The thing to remember as you get into use is that rasps are a two-handed tool. So you grab the, 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 the toe of it and then you grab the handle and they should only be used on the push stroke. Uh, if you pull and drag the rasp back over the work, that actually will prematurely dull the teeth. So when you use it, you can just push forward. I'm gonna lower that a little bit and that won't make such a nasty vibrating sound. That's better. So this is the rasp that I'll use to get close to a line, which is what I'm doing here on this uh, cove and ovalo with a fillet detail. So here we are shaping, we'll go across this, and when I get down almost to my line, I'm going to uh, switch to a modeler's rasp. Almost there. On this side, needs a little work. Now this is the modeler's rasp, and while it's generally designed for finishing, it also can be used um, for removing some material. So 
So you can see I have a little material to remove there, up, especially here by the fillet. And so I can use more downward pressure and that will actually remove material. So you don't always have to switch back to your uh, cabinet rasp to fix that. Now my layout lines, this looks good on this side and this looks square across, so I suspect that my layout lines are a little bit off. So we'll come back and fix that. Um, now uh, I'm going to use a large cabinet rasp to uh, shape the cove. And the thing about that's nice about these and nice about a lot of hand tool work is whether it's a gouge or whether it's a rasp is you actually use the shape of the tool to define the profile. So this cove is the profile of my uh, cabinet rasp on the, on the half round side. So that means I don't have to fuss around with uh, angling here and angling there and doing a little detail here. I'm just pushing through and when uh, it, it cuts the full depth, then I've, I've defined the correct curvature. Now on this particular detail, I need to come back this way because the, the rasp is tapered a little bit. And so if I don't come back this way, I'll actually end up taking more on this side than on the other side. So you do have to kind of equalize your strokes by coming back. And then once I have this detail defined, which is the exact curvature, I can come with a modeler's rasp and, and clean it up. And this could be so shallow that I could use the, the flat backside if I liked because uh, these are stitched all the way to the edges unlike a lot of machine made rasps which are not. So, And then I can use the flat part of the uh, rasp to cut the fillet and define that. And then I'm just cleaning up the tails behind. Now the rat tail comes into play when you use round, when you have a round detail. So if we look at this detail here, uh, this bead detail, what I would do is after uh, hacking this out with a saw is that this, this rasp would come in and do this round shape right here. So that is where the rat tail rasp really comes in handy. So rasps are your friend if you really like curves and can really open up um, a lot of woodworking uh, styles and details for you that uh, will get you out of your uh, straight and square world and, and into uh, uh, a much curvier and nicer looking world.